Hare Krishna, welcome to the lockdown program with Krishna under the umbrella of Govardhan Hill. Today we are reading and discussing the most beautiful Srimad Bhagavatam. Hare Krishna Prakash, Hare Krishna Pandava Prabhu Bhagavati Mataji, wonderful to see you. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. So, Hare Krishna. are you both well, Pandava Prabhu? We are okay, thank you very much. But we Pandava finally... Prabhu. Say it again, Bhagavati. Pandava Prabhu has on Monday kind of uh, kind of surgery i don't know how to say procedure so this is standing so my, my humble request is to remember about him and pray for him please mm, i'm not following my anyway i'm this is my family heritage i have high blood pressure you have Maybe. high blood pressure Welcome to the yes. club. I have also high blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, after a few testings, mm, they decided to do a procedure that is, um, let's say, pushing some um, uh, dirt from the arteries. The, Diet. The procedure. It, huh? No, and this is kind of a surgery in the hospital. Oh, they, 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 they get into the blood, blood vessel, uh, put a small uh, tubing and yeah. pump the air in order to make the flow, uh, let's say, uh, to make a big, bigger flow. So, they, so some of those um, clogged parts could move. So where where is it clogged? Uh, inside of the blood vessel. A particular place or more? O all over? I mean, uh, I, the testing was around the heart, so they they, they found yes. it in the, the main vest, the arteries. So, of course, they will do some... I think the first they do some kind of camera to see which part they let's say they tried so it's like kind that's of, kind quite of common thing. actually yes yes yeah. uh, how yeah, high is your you know how, I don't know how high is your blood pressure if if i have uh, let's say acceptable it's like 180 170 over 120. Uh, 180 Maybe over 120. Um, Oh, yes, mine is somewhere around 160. So you have better. better. But I, I yeah, taking I have some I have some tablets which I regularly take and. Uh, yeah, I have to I, take also. What what is it? Ramipril? No, something else. I don't remember. <laughs> okay, so you going Maybe to the hospital? Monday morning. Okay, so we'll keep you in our study? prayers, sir. Thank you very much. If you can kindly, uh, it's, it's just for a few few hours in the hospital, and then you go home or you stay. Yeah, it looks like uh, it depends. You, you know, they will decide. Maybe I will stay a right. few hours longer or day longer. It doesn't seem. It's just only like a, a anesthesia is in the two places where they insert the, the tubing. Yes. How did you find out? I mean, once I had really high blood pressure, and uh, the doc, I went to the doctor. They check it once, twice, the uh, third one, and said, "Okay, it's too high. You have to go to the hospital right away." So when I went right. there, they checked, and then they figure out what kind of um, uh, medicine to give me, and since then right. I'm taking it, and then um, and also. The, a few testing. I don't know really how to. Oh, they love the testing. Terminology. There's a lot of testing. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, they did like at least three different testings, and so it's not that bad. But 
but they decided to go for this kind of procedure. Uh, how did you find out in the first place you have high blood pressure? Did you have any symptoms? Dizziness mm. or any kind? No, I mean... Uh, or was I, a routine, I routine check? Yeah, this check. was a routine check, but you know, I physically I know that sometimes I had, you know, I, this uh, because this is not the first time, but right. but that one was really home. Okay, <laughs> keep us updated. It will so be all how right. Are you, how everyone is? How the voltage are doing? Everybody is just fine, huh? Where is everybody? <laughs> okay, it's it's early. It is very Maybe hot at the moment. The weather. Yes, uh, Varshana sent her apologies. With the weather, uh, her arthritis in the hand has flared up, and she's not feeling very well. She will join us on Wednesday. I don't have any other apologies, do I? Amit. Amit is on an animals rights demo in St. Eve's and will be a bit late coming back to Leicester. Okay. Yeah. Animals have rights, yes, sir. Uh, will be a bit late coming back to Leicester. It's regarding animal experimentation on beagle dogs. Yes, I know about that. And the compound has been blocked by activists. Oh my God, it's... It's serious stuff, uh, police, I'm sure. I will try to join the session tonight later. Okay, I'm it. Otherwise, I have nothing else. Okay, let's start. Uh, can we have a bit of Kirtan? Yeah, I got, yeah one more positive Pardon? thing we got recently. We got Golnitai from one, one of our friends, and we started there. From today, they are on our altar. We have you have on, gone in Thai deities. We want to see a picture of them. Oh, yes. At we one did. point. At one point. Yes. Okay, let's we start did. with Kirtan. Welcome, Prakash. Welcome, Pandava Prabhu Bhagavati Madhachi. Welcome, Ben. Let's start off. We were just waiting for Ben, huh? said so we can start off Hare Krishna. Kirtan, Kirtan, Kirtan. <coughs> Okay, so, so this is uh, kind of all uh, all these by Goldies uh, simple tune. <clears throat> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Hare Krishna Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 
Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jaya Gauranta, Jaya Gauranta, Jaya Gauranta, Jaya Gauranta, Jaya Pancha Tapa, Jaya Pancha Tapa, Jaya Pancha Tapa, Jaya Pancha Tapa, Jaya Pancha Jaya Pancha Tapa, 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 Jaya Pancha Tapa,
Hare Krishna, thank you very much. Pandava Prabhu, Bhagavati Madhaji, and here comes Samia as well. Hare Krishna, Samia, welcome, welcome everyone. Uh, I hope you feel better, Samia. He wasn't very well last session. So, Hare Krishna. So, again, apologies from Vaishnava Madhaji. And Amit, uh, also Amit, tries to come a bit later. Hare Krishna. So, Prabhupada Nectar. I got a little bit something and I'm sure Pandava Prabhu you have also something. So, one title. These are my titles. Uh, you will be judged. You will be judged. So, that is from a lecture in Los Angeles in 74. You'll be judged after your death, every one of us. Of course, if he takes Krishna consciousness seriously, then the path is automatic. Automatically you go back to home, back to Godhead. Haribo! There is no question of judgment. Judgment is for the criminals, the rascals who are not Krishna conscious. But if you become Krishna conscious, even if you cannot finish the job in this life, even if you fall, still you will be given another chance of human body. Oh, Samir has a message here. I just came to say, I'm not joining today. Hopeful will catch up on YouTube. So that means you're not feeling that well. Huh? Yes, you take rest and take care and we pray that you soon will feel better, much better, and uh, we'll have you as a regular at our programs. You take care, Samir. Take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Take Any your medicine. Last, uh, last time, so what's wrong with Samir? Say it again. And what what's the what the issue with his health? Uh, so what I heard, fever, diarrhea. Huh? It's not malaria. Okay, we'll we'll find out. We'll, Samir, you want to say something? Yeah, I'm just. Um, I think it's just flu, but uh, I feel very weak today, and I'm shivering. So. I think it's not uh, COVID, but uh, I need to rest. So yes, please accept my apologies, and I'll catch up no, on YouTube. Yes, no problem. But maybe you need a COVID test just to know what's yes. going on. Yes, I think okay. I need to get one. And your mom feels better than you. She feels a lot better. Yes. You will feel better in a few days, sir. Thank you, Guruji. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Okay. You take rest. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guruji. Okay. How many things can happen in this material world? Right, left, center. There's always a problem. Always, sir. Of one sort or another. So, to continue... You will be judged. But if you become Krishna conscious, even if you cannot finish the job in this life, even if you fall, still you will be given another chance of human body to begin where you end it, to begin from the point where you fell down. So that's Srila Prabhupada's uh, little excerpt. And there is another one. Prabhupada is coming back. Bhushaya Das is recounting. That is from, uh, from the memories somewhere. 
I left the movement around March 1978. I became very disillusioned and I was very unhappy. Yes, that is after Sheila Braupart left. Sheila Braupart left in 77. And we find that again and again, that uh, devotees, when Braupart was there, there was inspiration, there was protection, there was everything there. After Braupart left, things went a bit topsy-turvy, particularly in the first years after Braupart left, or decade, whatever. So, I, it was my responsibility to stay in the association of devotees, and with my offenses, I choose not to. Eventually, after many years of trying to run away from the Hare Krishna movement and trying to forget Srila Prabhupada and trying to forget all the nectar that I had experienced in my spiritual life, it be I became deeply entangled in the material world. I became a career military man as I performed really well in the United States Navy. I achieved a high rank and my professional career was skyrocketing. There was no limit, but my personal life was completely imploding. I was at rock bottom. I was at the bottom of the barrel. I was going through a very miserable divorce, very depressed, and to the point I was seeking out counseling and guidance. I was talking to my counselor one day, and she said, Bob, why don't you go out and interact more to take and take a college course to get out of your rut? I took the advice and enrolled in a history course from the local community college. One day, as I was doing some research in the military base library, I was looking on the bookshelf and I remember I saw the name Prabhupada on the book. It obviously caught my attention and I grabbed the book, brought it down and it happened to be the teachings of Queen Kunti. I said to myself, or rather it might have been out loud, I know this book. People were looking around like, what's this guy talking about? Upon further inspection on the shelf, there was also the nectar of devotion and the Bhagavatam. These books had obviously been distributed to the library by local devotees. I think that day, instead of doing my homework, I took a Bhagavatam, definitely the teachings of King Kunti and the Nectar of Devotion, back to my barracks. I kept on reading them and reading them and reading them and saying, Oh my God, Prabhupada is coming back to me. He is calling me back. Eventually, I came back to the movement after that. That was Prabhupada's mercy. This is Prabhupada's mercy. Hare Krishna. This is from the Memories series, Volume 5. Hare Krishna. That is my bit for tonight. So, I would like to ask uh, Pandava Prabhu to give us a little bit more nectar from the book which you have right in front of you. Are you ready to do that, Pandava? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. So I have this one is in July 1976. <clears throat> when Srila Prabhupada visited New Vrindavan, he was feeling ill. His secretary announced there would be an open meeting that night. It was raining and Prabhupada stayed uh, in a little house they had provided. He sat in the living room on the couch while Prabhupada Das uh, read to him Bhagavad Gita as it is. A few other devotees were also in the room. Prabhupada had his hand on his head and he was looking down. Pradyumna read for about an hour and Prabhupada said nothing. Everyone present was painfully aware that Prabhupada wasn't feeling well, and they all knew he was being very merciful just to sit with them for a while. Prabhupada's, secre Prabhupada's secretary finally said, Thank you very much for your association, Shri Prabhupada. This was an obvious hint for everyone to leave. All doors to Shri Prabhupada. 
said another devotee, and everyone bowed down and prepared to leave. But Srila Prabhupada said, any questions? And he lifted his head. Devotees happily sat back down and started asking Prabhupada philosophical questions. <clears throat> One of the questions was about the coming of Kali Yuga. Go get the Bhagavatam, Srila Prabhupada said. Pradyumna began reading a list of the coming calamities of Kali Yuga. At every point, Srila Prabhupada stopped, his, stopped him and gave an explanation. Within a few minutes, Srila Prabhupada was preaching dynamically and everyone forgot how sick he had been before. He spoke of how Vyasadev could see the future. Therefore, he predicted that the standard of beauty would be long hair. In the course of conversation, Srila Prabhupada also praised living at New Vrindavan, the favorite topic of the New Vrindavan devotees. He said that in India, if people live on the banks of the sacred river like Ganges, there will be they will travel a long distance to go to a tirtha or place of pilgrimage. The Ganges River flows through Calcutta, he said, but the people of Calcutta will go all the way to Hardwar to bathe in the same Ganga. Prabhupada assured the new Vrindavan devotees that their place was non different from Vrindavan and that they had no need to go to any other pilgrimage. You are already living in a sacred place. After the rainy night darshan, Radhanath remarked, Prabhupada was saying so many wonderful things. So that's one and maybe one more. Pandava Prabhu, can you come a little bit closer to the microphone? Yes, let me see. Okay. Sorry, there's some noise um, behind the window. Prabhupada tells short stories. Uh, so this was uh, from the this is from the class uh, from Vrindavan 1976. Srila Prabhupada uh, said to devotees. We have become first class imitator. Then he told a story. It was 1914, first war, world war was in the progress and the high court judges in Calcutta were on the uh, tiffin hour. I don't know what's the tiffin hour. Uh, tiffin hour, the, tiffin hour is a is a lunch break. Do you have these tiffins? Uh, these three, okay. three tiered tiffins or four or five tiered tiffins? Uh, so <laughs> in India, they call it tiffin hour, which is really funny. Okay, I never heard it. Okay, so um, an English judge said to Ashutosh Mukherjee. Mr. Mukherjee, now the Germans are coming. What are you going to do? Mr. Mukherjee replied, we shall offer our respects to them and invite them to do as they will. The answer uh, startled the Englishman. Why do I say that? You have simply taught us how to be slaves. Prabhupada then explained how before Gandhi the people of India thought that to have an advanced civilization, they had to imitate the English fashion. But we should not make that fashion, Prabhupada said. Guru is not a fashion. Who requires Guru? Tasmad Gurum Prapadita Jigyasu Shriya Uttamam. He requires a Guru. Jigyasu. Atato Brahma Jigyasa. That is human life. One who is interested in inquiring about the Brahman requires a guru. One who has no business for understanding Brahman, but simply to make a fashion that I have a guru, that is useless. It has no value. One must be inquisitive to understand the spiritual science. He requires a guru. Jigyasa means inquisitive. <laughs> I don't really understand really the 
the example of the story. Maybe neither, neither do I. But anyway, that's the that's the very important point. Prabhupada uh, was making quite often is that guru is not a fashion. Somebody has to be inquisitive. Somebody has to be intelligent to accept uh, guru. So that's the whole thing. Should I find another one? Yes, please. Let me just make one short comment which comes to mind when we speak about the mm -hmm. Germans uh, in, in the war and the English. Uh, of course, the English were... Uh, India tried to throw out the English, so they were an enemy. Huh? So Prabhupada said, why is it that the, the Indians liked the Germans? Because the Germans did so many horrible uh, things, but why is it the English like the German? Because the f enemy of my enemy is my friend. <laughs> because the Germans were the enemy of the English as well. <laughs> so that explains a, f a few things. Okay, one more story, please, Pandava. Uh, I think I've heard this one a long time ago, but anyway, it's nice to remember. It's 1971, uh, summer, Indra Dumna Naoswami accompanied Srila Prabhupada on his flight to London, where he was to attend the Ratha Yatra festival. <clears throat> on the flight, a film was shown, an old silent film of Charlie Chaplin. When the fil film began, Indra Dumna Das began reading the Bhagavad Gita but he noticed that Srila Prabhupada, who was sitting two seats away, was watching the film and chuckling. Indradimna felt a little confused, since he knew devotees were not supposed to watch movies. But seeing Prabhupada's appreciation of the film, he stopped reading and laughed along with Prabhupada and his servant at Charlie Chaplin's humor. When the film was over, Indradina met Pradyumna Das at the back of the plane and asked why Shla Prabhupada was laughing during the film. Prabhupada said, uh, Prab I don't know, sorry, Pradyumna said he would go and ask Prabhupada. He soon returned smiling and said, Prabhupada said that Krishna is the original source of everything and since Charlie Chaplin's humor was original, he could appreciate Krishna there. Indradyumna returned to his seat, appreciating how Shla Prabhupada saw Krishna everywhere. At the plane, uh, as the plane landed in London, Indradyumna was looking forward to seeing the devotees and hearing Prabhupada's arrival address at the very place temple. But the airline had misplaced Prabhupada's suitcase and Indra was asked to wait behind him uh, in case it will show up. Disappointed, Indra was left alone as the other devotees performed Kirtan with, uh, while escorting Prabhupada to his car. Indra waited for two hours before the suitcase was finally located. He then took a taxi to the temple, but to his great dismay, he found the ceremonies over and the devotees finishing a feast in honor of Prabhupada's arrival. Indra Dimna asked the devotees where Shri Prabhupada's room was, and he was told it was four, uh, four flights up the stairs. So on the fourth floor. Upon reaching the fourth floor, Indra Dimna knocked on the Prabhupada's door and then entered the room. Dragging the big suitcase behind him, suddenly he noticed Srila Prabhupada standing there watching him. Embarrassed for having walked into the Prabhupada, Indra fell to the floor offering his humble obeisances. Suddenly he felt a firm slap on his back and he heard Srila Prabhupada was uh, saying something to him. When uh, Indra arose, Shla Prabhupada had gone back into adjoining quarters. Still feeling Prabhupada's strong slab, he turned to Nanda Kumar, who stood there with wide open eyes and big smile on his face. 
Indra then asked what Prabhupada had said. Nanda Kumar replied that in this material world, everything is very difficult, but when you go back to Godhead, everything will be very easy. Hare Krishna, and what a beautiful think, story. And I think uh, uh, Indra Dimna Maharaj should uh, even go more details about this incident because he said, Finally, when he uh, got down, there was nothing uh, uh, left for him to eat. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but I mean, if you get a Maybe slap on awesome. your, if you get a slap on your back from Srila Prabhupada, you sort it for millions of lifetimes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hare Krishna. That is uh, what a shame. I was waiting for that. That uh, that bit with the prasadam. Huh? That is not in that story. Huh? No, it's not there. But I think I remember I uh, was once during this when Maharaj was saying this story, and, and he added at the end that finally there was no prasadam like a story. <laughs> yes, yes. Everyone was busy. Okay. Thank you very much. Beautiful story, very instructive. Huh? Thank you, Pandava Prabhu. Uh, okay, we have in the meantime Rashmi joined us as well. So, welcome everyone, and we're going straight to the Srimad Bhagavatam. And I would ask Pandava Prabhu, please do us uh, the text 30. And uh, text 30. Amit will join us a bit later. Samir is still not well. He was here for a minute and Vaishana is not feeling well with her arthritis and hands flaring up by this hot weather. So she won't come at all. So the text is in the chat, text 30, Pandava Prabhu or Bhagavati Mataji, as you like. Give us a reading of text 30. It's a beautiful sh shloka with a reference to Bhagavad Gita, 15 references to Bhagavad Gita. Let's have text 30. Okay, I can try. Om Namo Bhagavata Vasudevaya. 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 Tado pasam sikya gida sakasa nil vimukta sangamana adipodushe krishna lasat pita pate chatur budhe podastite minita drik vyadharayat. Translation Thereupon, the men who spoke on different subjects with thousands of meanings and who fought on thousands of battlefields and protected thousands of men, stopped speaking and being completely freed from all bondage, withdrew his mind from everything else and fixed his wide open eyes upon the original personality of Godhead Sri Krishna, who stood before him, four-handed, dressed in yellow garments, that glittered and shined purple in the momentous hour of leaving his material body bishma deva set the glorious example concerning the important function of the human form of life the subject matter which attracts the dying man becomes the beginning of his next life therefore if one is absorbed in thoughts of the supreme person of the Supreme Lord Shri Krishna, he is sure to go back to Godhead without any doubt. This is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 8.5 to 8.15. And whoever at the moment of death quits his body remembering me alone, at once attains my nature. Of this there is no doubt. Whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, that state he will attain without fail. Therefore, Arjuna, you should always think of me in the form of Krishna, and at the same time carry out your prescribed duty of fighting. 
with your activities dedicated to me and your mind and intelligence fixed on me, you will attain me without doubt. He who meditates on the Supreme Personality of Godhead, his mind constantly engaged in remembering me, undeviated from the past, he, Opata Arjuna, is sure to reach me. One should meditate upon the Supreme Person as the one who knows everything, as he who is the oldest, who is the controller, who is smaller than the smallest, who is the maintainer of everything, who is beyond all material conception, who is inconceivable and who is always a person. He is luminous like the sun and being transcendental is beyond this material nature. One who at the time of death fixes his life air between the eyebrows and in full devotion engages himself in remembering the Supreme Lord will certainly attain to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Persons learned in the Vedas who utter omkara and who are great sages in the renounced order enter into brahman desiring such perfection one practice practices celibacy i shall now explain to you this process by which one may attain salvation the yogic situation is that of detachment from all sensual engagements closing all the doors of the senses and fixing the mind on the heart and the life air at the top of the head, one establishes himself in yoga. After being situated in this yoga practice and vibrating the sacred syllable Om, the supreme combination of letters, if one thinks of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and quit his body, he will certainly reach the spiritual planets. For one who remembers me without deviation, I am easy to obtain a son of Krita because of his constant engagement, engagement in devotional service. After attaining me, the great souls who are yogis in devotion never return to this temporary world, which is full of misery because they have attained the highest perfection. Sri Bhishma Deva attained the perfection of quitting his body at will and was fortunate enough to have Lord Krishna, the object of his attention, personally present at the time of his death. He therefore fixed his open eyes upon him. He wanted to see Sri Krishna for a long time out of his spontaneous love for him. Because he was a pure devotee, he had, very he had very little to do with the detailed performance of yogic, yogic principles. Simple bhakti yoga is enough to bring about perfection. Therefore, the, the ardent desire of Bhishma Deva was to see the person of Lord Krishna the most lovable object. And by the grace of the Lord, Sri Bhishma Deva had the opportunity at the last stage of his breathing. Thank you very much, yes. Bhagavati Mataji. Can you say a few words about it or pick some points uh, to elaborate a little bit? This is very important verse because in the verse itself and in the purport, we have the essence of knowledge about a very important moment of our existence, which comes to everyone, no exceptions, namely the moment of death. And in just make it make to make it short, which is confirmed in, in the in this part of Bhagavatam, whatever we concentrate on at the last moment of our life, this will be the beginning of our next life. And this is very logical and very 
simple that one can say so that's why the whole process of bhakti is the actually preparation to this last moment last final exam and it comes to everyone and it is unavoidable and whatever we do or whatever we think now an illusion is that strong and it must be strong because otherwise we will be all in mental hospital we have to concentrate of every day on everyday life activities but we have to we have to organize our life in such a way that we have in everyday life many elements reminding us about krishna because actually the last moment can happen at every moment so we usually think that we will die when we are old but even then we still think if we are getting older we think still think that we are young we are you are young yes we are just the same person as we were being 18 and we just forget that this is all temporary everything we have in this life everything we experience every joy and every sorrow is temporary and today we were listening to the um, on saturdays every saturday krishna kshetra swami is making the meeting with his disciples and friends and today he started from the not very um, good news namely one of the devotees over 70 year old he had passed away recently he was from croatia or, or serbia and he and he his son was speaking about it so it was not very surprising because he was let's say we like old enough but he was every everything was okay he was he was doing okay and then started suddenly he started feeling very weak and and deteriorating very quickly but at his last moments he was he had he had a krishna's picture in front of him and he was asking krishna to take him home and this is not a story from some you know some some book this is what happened few few days ago so i don't know i it's fantastic weather around us and full of joy and enthusiasm and so i don't want to be to make everybody like feeling sad and depressed but actually this is what is going to happen to all of us so we have to we just have to be prepared and of course it's easy to say more difficult to do but this is why we have the association of the devotees to remind us and also the all aspects of our of our like devotional life and but this is if i may one more thing which is my personal uh, might be might be you might think that it's kind of funny or but i remember when i was pregnant and the day of delivery was coming closer and closer somehow i had these th thoughts which I, I i still remember namely because i was of course, of course i was afraid big of the pain of the i was just afraid as a normal like a person but i but it was unavoidable <laughs> and i thought that this is something like with death that it is unavoidable of course the delivery is the beginning of new life of course but this kind of 
uh, that it I couldn't avoid it. <laughs> I couldn't do it in other way. It could, you know, so that's sorry for but it is something I, I thought a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Bhagavati, for the beautiful explanation of the verse and uh, for your personal story as well. And uh, no, we, at least I, don't feel depressed uh, or sad or anything. The opposite, uh, very joyful. That is, uh, uh, devotee, please, Krishna, take me back. So Krishna was on the mind in the last moment just like Bhishma Dev, uh, Krishna was there in his mind so thank you for uh, this story and thank you for your wonderful explanation of this Bhagavatam verse anybody has any questions any question to this verse anyone oh these are your deities oh aren't they beautiful Oh, Krishna, look at that, raising the hands up, uh, plenty of flowers, a beautiful turquoise dress. Hare Krishna, thank you so much for sharing that. These lords are now permanently at your house. Hare Krishna. Okay. We're going to text. 31. And I would like to ask Ben to give us a reading of text 31. Sorry, I have some, some people down outside talking very loudly, even though I have my windows closed. I'm sure you can hear it. Ben, okay, go ahead. Visudhaya Dharanaya Ata subas tad iksha yai vashu gata yuda yuda srama nivrita sarvendriya vritti vibramas Tushtava Janyam Vishrajan Janardanam Translation By pure meditation looking at Lord Sri Krishna, he at once fell free from all material inauspiciousness and was relieved from all bodily pains caused by the arrow wounds. Thus all the external activities of his senses at once stopped, and he prayed transcendently to the controller of all living beings while quitting his material body. The material body is a gift of the material energy, technically, technically called illusion. Identify, identification with the material body is due to forgetfulness of our eternal relationship with the Lord. For a pure devotee of the Lord, like Bhishma Dev, this illusion was at once removed as soon as the Lord arrived. Lord Krishna is like the sun, and the illusory or external material energy is like darkness. In the presence of the sun, there is no possibility that dark darkness can stand. Therefore, just on the arrival of Lord Krishna, all material contamination was completely removed, and Bhishma Dev was thus able to be transcendently situated by stopping the activities of the impure senses in collaboration with matter. The soul is originally pure, and so also the senses. By material contamination, in the senses assume the role of imperfection and impurity. By revival of contact with the Supreme Pure, Lord Krishna, the senses again become freed from material contaminations. Bhishma Dev attained all these transcendental conditions. 
prior to his leaving the material body because the presence of the Lord. The Lord is the controller and benefactor of all living beings. That is the verdict of all Vedas. He is the supreme eternity and living entity amongst all eternal living beings. And he alone provides all necessities for all kinds of living beings. Thus he provided all facilities to fulfill the transcendental desires of his great devotee, Sri Bhishma Dev, who began to pray as follows. Thank you, Ben. That's actually a famous verse, Nityo Nityanam Chaitanas Chaitananam, at least these, these lines, huh? or, or further. Yes, okay. Can you say a few words about this shloka? Well, um, I mean, um, Prabhupada's just saying that um, um, identification with the material body is illusion, and that the material body is a product of uh, the material energy. Um, and that... Uh, the problem for the conditioned souls is that they are, they are, um, when they are, when they are put into a material body, they forget about their original uh, relationship with Krishna and uh, their spiritual identity. Um, but in this sense, uh, with uh, Bhishma Dev. Uh, Prabhupada is making the point that um, that uh, as soon as as soon as Krishna arrived on the scene, all illusion was uh, dispelled in his presence because uh, he's the supreme pure, and all all material contamination uh, c cannot uh, coexist in his presence. So. It's like Prabhupada gives the example of uh, darkness. Uh, darkness can stand in in light. So this is the this is the the metaphor um, um, to explain um, Krishna's uh, uh, power in a sense in terms of illusion. Whenever Krishna is present, there is no illusion. Just as whenever there's light, there is there's no darkness. So, um, so he's also Prabhupada is also explaining that um, that uh, the the cure for our material disease um, is to revive our contact with the supreme pure, i.e., Krishna, uh, and uh, try to. Try to return to our uh, our transcendental uh, condition before we uh, before we leave this uh, material body. Uh, Prabhupada also makes the point that um, uh, he's uh, outlining uh, Krishna's supremacy amongst all all other living entities and eternal beings. And uh, he makes the point that uh, Krishna is providing uh, the necessity, necessities for uh, everyone and everything, and uh, like that. So, thank you very much, Ben. Beautiful explanation on this verse. Now, the question could be raised. Now, Bhishma Dev, uh, he had the Lord right in front of him. And he could fix his vision on the Lord. So, what about us? Yes. What about us? What I mean, what what is our position here? For Bhishma Dev, that was very easy. But Krishna is not in front of our eyes. But only um, because Krishna is absolute, you could you could uh, you could 
posit this uh, explanation. You could say that because Krishna is absolute, uh, there's no difference between Krishna himself and his name. So if you're in constant contact with Krishna's name, it's the same as being in contact with uh, Krishna, uh, a vision of Krishna. Holy ball. Isn't that a beautiful explanation? And this is the only explanation. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ben. That's exactly what it is. Hare Krishna. So, anyone has any question? Or shall we move on? This time I would like to ask Rashmi Mataji, can you take a reading of text 32? Do you have your glasses? Text 32. Shri Bhishma Uvacha. Hare Krishna. Shri Bhagavan, Shri, oh, sorry, no, it's not Bhagavan. Shri Bhishma Uvacha, Uvacha. Itir Matir Upakal Pitavit Srina Bhagavati Satvata Pungave Vibhumani Swasukham Upagate Kvachid Vihartum Prakrit Timupe Yusi Yat Bhava Pravaha Translation Bhishma Dev said, Let me now invest my thinking, feeling, and willing which was so long engaged in different subjects and occupational duties in the all-powerful Lord Shri Krishna. He is always self-satisfied, but sometimes being, being the leader of his devotees, <coughs> he enjoys transcendental pleasure by descending on the material world, although from him only the material world is created. Purport. Because Bhishma Dev was a statesman, the head of the Kuru dynasty, a great general and a leader of the Kshatriyas, his mind was strewn over many subjects and his thinking, feeling and willing were engaged in different matters. Now in order to achieve pure devotional service, he wanted to invest all powers of thinking, feeling and willing entirely in the Supreme Being, Lord Krishna. He is described herein as the leader of the devotees and all-powerful. Although Lord Krishna is the original personality of Godhead, he himself descends or not to bestow upon his pure devotees the boon of devotional service. He descends sometimes as Lord Krishna as he is and sometimes as Lord Chaitanya. Both are leaders of the pure devotees. Bo pure devotees of the Lord have no desire other than the service of the Lord and therefore they are called Satvata. The Lord is a chief among such Satvatas. Bhishma Dev therefore had no other desire, uh, sorry, yeah, Bhishma Dev therefore had no other desires. Unless one is purified from all sorts of material desires, the Lord does not become one's leader. Desires cannot be wiped out, but they have only to be purified. It is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita by the Lord himself that he gives his instruction from within the heart of the pure devotee who is constantly engaged in the service of the Lord. Such instruction is given not from any material source, but only for going, is not given for any material purpose, but only for going back home, back to Godhead. Bhagavad Gita 10.10 .10. For the ordinary man who wants to lord it over material nature, the Lord not only sanctions and becomes a witness of activities, but he never gives the non-devotee instructions for going back to Godhead. That is the difference in dealing by the Lord with different living beings, both the devotee and the non-devotee. He is the leader of all the living beings. As the king of the state rules both the prisoners and the free citizens, but his dealings are different in terms of the devotee and non-devotee. Non-devotees never take care, never care to take any instruction from the Lord, and therefore the Lord is silent in their case, although he witnesses all their activities and awards them the necessary results, good or bad. The devotees are above this material goodness and badness. They are progressively on the path of transcendence and therefore they have no desire for anything material. The devotee also knows Sri Krishna as the original Narayan because Lord Sri Krishna by his plenary portion appears as Karanodakshai Vishnu, 
the original uh, source of all material creation. The Lord also desires the association of his pure devotees, and for them only the Lord descends on the earth and enlivens them. The Lord appears out of his own will. He is not forced by the conditions of material nature. He is therefore described here as the Vibhu or the Almighty, for he is never conditioned by the laws of material nature. Thank you, Rashmi Madhachi. Please say a few words about his shloka. So here, uh, 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 Bhishma, Pitam, Bhishma Dev is setting an example. He's about to leave his body and he's been a Kshatriya and he's been a Brahmachari uh, throughout his life. He's done a lot of sacrifices. He, is, um, he was extremely powerful, power personified. But at the time of death, now he knows that he has to invest his complete energy into thinking about Krishna. Now all that has to be, there has to be a shift uh, from all those subjects that he was engrossed in at the time of death. And now he has to shift them towards Krishna. So Pishma Bitama was a true, um, was a pure devotee. He was a, he was a Mahajan. He knew that to go back home, back to God. And now he has to completely concentrate on this beautiful form of Krishna in front of him. So he's now prepared for that. He was waiting for this moment. This was the moment for which he actually participated in this battle on the wrong side. That was the, uh, un, the internal, the antaranga reason for him doing all this because he, he knew that he will get to see Krishna at the time of his death because Krishna uh, has to win. The, the Pandavas had to win. Krishna was on their side. So it is just showing his um, it is just showing his intelligence, his spiritual intelligence, his insight. And then the purport is very self-explanatory. Prabhupada has uh, explained all this um, uh, in a lot of detail. This um, so we are the the last part. We we are the uh, Anu, and uh, uh, so I learned this in my in our Bhagavad Gita class. It was actually on this. That Krishna is the Vibhu, he's the Almighty, and we are the Anu, we are the small part of him. And that is the main difference between Krishna and us. Uh, that he is Vibhu and we are uh, Anu. And uh, regarding, uh, in the middle there was this um, uh, Bhagavad Gita verse about Krishna, uh, so it is 4.8 and 4.9, uh, which was which says that Krishna uh, Krishna descends uh, to to uh, yada yada hi dharmasya that all that uh, verses that Krishna is descending to uh, establish the righteous principles and annihilate the miscreants. Uh, uh, but that's the bahiranga reason. The antaranga Krishna can do that. He's powerful. He's the owner of controller of uh, Mahamaya. He can use his material energy to complete to uh, completely deal with all these miscreants. But the main reason, the antaranga reason, why he is appearing is to please his devotees. So that because his devotees want to have his darshan, that is why he is. He is uh, descending down millennium after millennium in various forms, in various um, incarnations. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Ashmi Majushri. That was very nicely explained, and that particular point uh, uh, is, is uh, you, you explained very nicely that. Krishna is uh, descending to please his pure devotees. Uh, that is his main objective. Uh, one question for you, Rashmi. Here, Srila Prabhupada quotes uh, Bhagavad Gita 10.10. What's that verse? I don't know, Prabhuji. Can you find out? I don't have Bhagavad Gita in front of me at the moment. But what uh, about you, Ben? It's a famous verse. In the context, I read it again. Uh, such instruction is given not for any material purpose, but only for going back home, back to Godhead. Bhagavad Gita 10.10. 10. Yenamam 
by young today. To those who are constantly devoted to serving me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. Beautiful. Thank you. So, Krishna from within, he gives understanding how to achieve him. If we are constantly devoted to serving him with love. Beautiful verse, famous verse, uh, uh, verse to remember, Tesham Satata Yuktanam. Dadami Buddhi Yogam, Dadami, I'm giving the Buddhi, the intelligence. Okay, any other question to this verse? Or shall we move on to text 33? Come on, Ben, take 33. Haribol, you want me to read it? Yes, please. Okay. Vi bhuvana kamanam tamalavanam ravikara guru varam varam dadani vapuralaka kula vritana bhajam Vijaya sake rate rastumi navadaya Translation Shri Krishna is the intimate friend of Arjuna. He has appeared on the earth in his transcendental body, which resembles the bluish color of the Tamala tree. His body attracts everyone in the three planetary systems upper, middle, and lower. May his glittering yellow dress and his lotus face covered with paintings of sandalwood pulp be the object of my attraction and may I not desire fruitive results. Purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. When Sri Krishna, by his own internal pleasure, appears on earth, he does so by the agency of his internal potency. The attractive features of his transcendental body are desired in all the three worlds, namely the upper, middle, and lower planetary systems. Nowhere in the universe are there such beautiful bodily features as those of Lord Krishna. Therefore, his transcendental body has nothing to do with anything materially created. Arjuna is described here as the conqueror, and Krishna is described as his intimate friend. Bhishma Dev, on his bed of arrows after the battle of Kurukshetra, is remembering the particular dress of Lord Krishna, which he put on as the driver of Arjuna's chariot while fighting was going on between Arjuna and Bhishma. Bhishma Bhishma's attraction was drawn by the glittering dress of Krishna, and indirectly he admired his so-called enemy. Arjuna for possessing the Lord as his friend. Arjuna was always a conqueror because the Lord was his friend. Bhishma Dev takes this opportunity to address the Lord as Vijay Sakhi, friend of Arjuna, because the Lord is pleased when he is addressed conjointly with his devotees who are related with him in different transcendental humors. While Krishna was the charioteer of Arjuna, sun rays glittered on the dress of the Lord and the beautiful hue created by the reflection of such rays was never forgotten by Bhishma Dev. As a great fighter, he was relishing the relation of Krishna in the chivalrous, chivalrous humor. Transcendental relation with the Lord 
in any one of the different races, humors, is relishable by the respected devotee, by the respected devotees in the highest ecstasy. Less intelligent mundaners who want to make a show of being transcendentally related with the Lord artificially jump at once to the relation of conjugal love, imitating the damsels of Rajadumi, Rajabumi, Rajadam. Such a cheap relation with the Lord exhibits only the base mentality of the mundana, because one who has relished conjugal humor with the Lord cannot be attached to worldly conjugal wrath, which is condemned even by mundane ethics. The eternal relation of a particular soul with the Supreme Lord is evolved. A genuine relation of the living being with the Supreme Lord can take any form after the five principal rasas, and it does not make any difference in transcendental degree to the genuine devotee. Bhishma Dev is a concrete example of this, and it should be carefully observed how the great general is transcendentally related with the Lord. Thank you. Beautiful purport. Say a few words. Uh, so, I mean, <clears throat> so, um, Bhishma Dev is uh, beginning his uh, prayer, so he's he's describing um, describing um, in this verse, you know, um, he's describing about the relationship between uh, Krishna and Arjuna, and uh, then he's describing the. Uh, 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 how the Lord has appeared in this earth, and, and then he's describing his uh, transcendental body. Uh, and uh, he's, he's, uh, he, he's, he's praying that may this transcendental form of the Lord uh, be the object of his attraction, and that he might, that he may not desire fruitive results. So he's, he's, he wants to be fully focused uh, in steady meditation upon the Lord in that form and not be deviated by any other kind of uh, uh, result. So, um, Prabhupada is, uh, Prabhupada is uh, declaring in this purport that Krishna appears in this world by his own sweet will. Um, that uh, nothing can really, uh, nothing can force him to come here. He's not obligated to come, but that he comes of his own, uh, his own free will, his own choice to come here. Um, and Prabhupada is explaining about uh, Krishna's form and how his form is not material, and uh, there is no comparison. Uh, in this material world to Krishna's form because Krishna's form is not material but is pure spirit uh, like that um, he explains as well about uh, uh, the Lord's uh, relationship uh, with uh, Arjuna and how he took the position as the as his devotee's um, chariot driver um, so the Lord, he sometimes, he does, he takes what would appear to be a, a subordinate position to his devotee, but he, he, he relishes a transcendental pleasure from, from being um, controlled by his pure devotee in, in some instances. There are uh, some examples of this, and this, this is one of the foremost examples is when he was... Uh, Arjuna's chariot driver. So, um, Prabhupada begins to touch upon the different uh, relationships that devotees have uh, with the Lord, and he mentions that there's five uh, rasas or humors that the devotees uh, relate with the Lord within. 
he also gives a prohibition and a, a warning here that some people they they like to jump to the topmost ras, uh, the conjugal conjugal ras. Um, but this is uh, is uh, not uh, not how things are done, you know. And we can This is a lot of people. They take this very cheaply. Uh, the Lord's uh, Ras with uh, the Dhams of the Vraja Dhammas, as uh, Prabhupada describes them. So we, you know, this uh, to be in this kind of relationships, it has to be a real, uh, a real and genuine relationship. The devotee, they have to, they have to have made that progress and come to that stage of uh, pure devotional service, then these kind of rasas and all that stuff, it all becomes revealed to the devotee, just as we read in the verse in the Bhagavad Gita, 10.10, uh, you know, that the Lord, uh, the Lord, he gives the understanding from within the heart of the devotee, and he reveals everything to the devotee, and uh, part of that revelation is obviously is uh, our eternal relationship with the devotee, our Swarup Siddhi, which is our original spiritual form, which we which we uh, which we relate with the Lord in. So, like that. So, Prabhupada's giving that uh, that um, that. Uh, that warning not to not to take things cheaply, but this is a very serious subject matter, and we should never take these things uh, cheaply. Thank you very much, Ben. Yes, and the proof, as Srila Prabhupada mentions, uh, if someone is truly uh, in that conjugal ras with Krishna, then he has absolutely no attraction to the material ras. So. If someone is talking or even being so much attracted of hearing about these things prematurely, then uh, at the same time he is engaging in that material uh, rush of that sort, then, then we know immediately that is not uh, sincere. And those who <coughs> jump to this uh, conjugal, relationship with Krishna and imitate prematurely they're called uh, uh, prakrita sahajyas uh, a cheap uh, imitation of that uh, I highlighted here one uh, sentence nowhere in the universe are there such beautiful bodily features as those of Lord Krishna that's amazing. Nowhere in the universe. <coughs> so, Krishna's beauty is unimaginable, really. Okay, any questions? No, I just I just wanted to say, oh, thank you for uh, bringing that point up. I should have mentioned. But yeah, of course, Prabhupada, he does make, um, he does make this point. Um, quite regularly about this, you know, about prakriya, prakrita, sahajas. People take everything very cheaply and... They have you know. a whole sampradaya, the prakrita sahajas, but it is not authorized. Okay, let's take 34. Rashmi Mataji, are you ready for text 34? You don't want to do it, Prabhuji? I do the next one. Uh, why don't you do it, Prabhuji? Okay. Yudhi Duraga Rajo Vidhumra Vishak Gachalulita Shrama Vari Alankritasye Nama Nishita Sarair Vibhidyamana Tvachit vilasat kavachis to Krishna Atma. On the battlefield where Sri Krishna attended Arjuna out of friendship, 
The flowing hair of Lord Krishna turned ashen due to the dust raised by the hoofs of the horses. And because of his labor, beads of sweat wetted his face. All of these decorations intensified by the wounds dealt by my sharp arrows were enjoyed by him. Let my mind thus go unto Sri Krishna. Purpled by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. The Lord is an absolute form of eternity, bliss and knowledge. As such, transcendental loving service to the Lord in one of the five principal relations, namely Shanta, Dasya, Sakya, Vatsalya and Madhurya, i.e. neutrality, servicership, fraternity, filial affection and conjugal love is graciously accepted by the Lord when offered to the Lord in genuine love and affection. Sri Bhishma Dev is a great devotee of the Lord in the relation of servitorship. Thus his throwing of sharp arrows at the transcendental body of the Lord is as good as the worship of another devotee who throws soft roses upon him. It appears that Bhishma Dev is repenting the actions he committed against the person of the Lord, but factory the Lord's body was not at all pained due to his transcendental existence. His body is not matter. Both he himself and his body are completely spiritual identity. Spirit is never pierced, burned, dried, moistened, etc. This is vividly explained in the Bhagavad Gita, so also is it is stated in the Skanda Purana. It is said that, that there that spirit is always uncontaminated and indestructible. It cannot be distressed, nor can it be dried up. When Lord Vishnu in his incarnation appears before us, he seems to be like one of the conditioned souls, materially engaged, just to bewilder the Asuras, or the non-believers who are always alert to kill the Lord, even from the very beginning of his appearance. Kamsa wanted to kill Krishna and Ravana wanted to kill Ram, because foolishly they were unaware of the fact that the Lord is never killed, for the spirit is never annihilated. Therefore, Bhishmadev, piercing of the body of Lord Krishna, is a sort of bewildering problem for the non-devotee atheist. But those who are devotees or liberated souls are not bewildered. Bhishmadev appreciated the all-merciful attitude of the Lord because he did not leave Arjuna alone. Also, he was disturbed by the sharpened arrows of Bishmadev, nor was he reluctant to come before Bishmadev, that bad, even though he was ill-treated by him on the battlefield. Bishma, B, Bishma's repentance and the Lord's merciful attitude are both unique in this picture. Sri Vishnava Chakravati Thakur, a great Acharya and devotee in the humor of conjugal love with the Lord, remarks very saliently in this regard. He says that the wounds created on the body of the Lord of the sharpened, by the sharpened arrows of Bhishma Dev were as pleasing to the Lord as the biting of a fiancé who bites the body of the Lord directed by a strong sense of sex desire. Such biting by the opposite sex is never taken as a sign of enmity, even if there is a wound on the body. Therefore, the fighting as an exchange of transcendental pleasure between the Lord and his pure devotee, Sri Bhishma Dev, was not at all mundane. Besides said, since the Lord's body and the Lord are identical, there was no possibility of wounds in the absolute body. The apparent wounds caused by the sharpened arrows are misleading in 
to the common man who, but one who has a little absolute knowledge can understand the transcendental exchange in the chivalrous relation. The Lord was perfectly happy with the wounds caused by the sharpened arrows of Bishmadev. The word Vibhidyamana is significant because the Lord's skin is not different from the Lord. Because our skin is different from our soul. In our case, the word Vibhidyamana or being bruised and cut would have been quite suitable. Transcendental bliss is of different varieties, and the variety of activities in the mundane world is but a perverted reflection of transcendental bliss. Because everything in the mundane world is qualitatively mundane, it is full of inequities, whereas in the absolute realm, because everything is of the same absolute nature, there are varieties of enjoyment without inequity. The Lord enjoyed the wounds created by his great devotee Bhishma Dev, and because Bhishma Dev is a devotee in the chivalrous relation, he fixed up his mind on Krishna in that wounded condition. Hare Krishna. I do recall a story where I don't exactly know what some thing from the material point of view happened to Srila Prabhupada. It may have been the story where he got knocked over by a bull that was before he came to the West. Whatever it was, something similar. And the devotee is asking how that happened, why that happened. And Srila Prabhupada said, love bites. These are Krishna's love bites. So that is also here explained. This piercing of arrows, these are love bites. So we, in our mundane uh, outlook or estimation or any mundane person cannot understand this passage of the Srimad Bhagavatam, said uh, Krishna enjoyed the arrows of Bhishma Dev. But again, as Ben, you explained so nicely before, and we have heard so many times, the Lord is absolute. So there is no, it's a spiritual form. Now what said Bhagavad Gita verse? Spirit is never pierced, burned, dried, moistened, and so on. Anyone has it at his fingertips? Famous Bhagavad Gita verse that the soul can never be cut into pieces and then then. I don't have a reference for that verse, but I know it's in the second chapter somewhere. Yes, it's text 23 in the second chapter. The soul can never be cut to pieces by any weapon, nor burned by fire, nor moistened by water, nor withered by the wind. So that is that verse uh, which the Srila Prabhupada refers to. Uh, what else? So, you know, the Lord, you know the Lord, he had the injury, so it's like he had injuries uh, from the arrows. <coughs> Apparently. So... What would have happened when the arrows just come out? It would have just disappeared. Or would say it that again. Just, what say that again? What would what would have happened when the when the arrows come were pulled out? They would have just disappeared on the wounds. Mm. <laughs> That's a very detailed question. I don't know. Um, I I'm not aware that the arrows were like Bhishma Dev were stuck in Krishna's transcendental body. <laughs> Uh, or maybe maybe the, maybe he was just grazed by them. Yeah, so even hit by them, or and uh, I mean Krishna displayed some wounds, uh, and Krishna displayed some sweat on his forehead, and it looks like all just like uh, mundane uh, material activities, uh, but it is not so. Uh, Krishna displayed 
some fear uh, where Kunti was bewildered. Uh, Krishna displayed some fear when Mother Yashoda wanted to bind him or run after him with a stick. So was he actually afraid? Is uh, Acharya's discussing this question in many, many, many ways. So these are the pastimes of the Lord. They appear to be human, but they are superhuman. They are not human. These things are difficult to understand. But we can accept these things as it's written in the Bhagavatam and in Shastra and as Srila Prabhupada tells us. We may understand it Certainly from the mundane point of view, um, these things don't make sense, these things are not understandable. But from the spiritual point of view, we know that Krishna's transcendental body is just, it's just spirit. It's just, I mean, the closest example one could possibly, or I can possibly think of in, in your dream. The dream body is looking like uh, like a, it appears like a, a real body or any other bodies in the dream, but they are of a different substance. And that is only subtle. That is not necessarily even spiritual. So a, a dream body is not, may, may show some signs of sweating or fear, but it's not the substance which our material body, which uh, if it's pierced, we have to go to, to ICU, we have to go to hospital, we have to put a bandage around. Uh, that is not like that, even in a dream body. That's only a subtle body. Ben? No, I was just thinking about this point of fear. Um, because everything in its original, in the original cause, is coming from Krishna. So, I mean, would it be fair to say that there is a, I mean, Krishna has displayed fear in a situation. So, the origin of fear is Krishna. So, is it fair to say that because everything is the origin, because Krishna is the origin of all things, that the origin of fear is from Krishna. So, hence fear and anxiety exist without it being uh, present in Krishna. Then how would it exist? Because anxiety, which is a, another, another word for kind of fear, uh, if you like, it exists in the spiritual world because the devotees, they're in a state of anxiety in relation to Krishna. Okay, one could say uh, fear is the uh, absence of, just like darkness is the absence of light. So fear is the absence of, uh, I don't know what, joy or... So, certainly within uh, the spiritual world, there is no fear. There is nobody described that there is any fear. Even the, even the, but maybe the like, cowherd boy is displaying some fear, I'm not sure. Yes? But, yes, because even in some of the pastimes, the devotees, the they are frightened sometimes when these demons come. They're all taking shelter of Krishna, but also in the other pastimes, um, I mean, Radharani and the gopis, and there's mention of um, them becoming um, like almost mad with anxiety in a sense, you know, so, but yes. it's like, it's it's like described as transcendental anxiety. It's not it's not anxiety that we would perceive in this material world. There's yes, a, because our our fear is centered on the body. Because fear is like a, is like um, an emotion of say 
something is impending to, or may be impending or imagined or something, but something harmful for uh, befalling the body uh, could create a kind of fear, like something impending, some some kind of uh, harm or punishment or something, you know. Um, Actually, fear is a very interesting question. Fear to die. Everybody has fear to die. Why is that? We have fear to die. Huh? And Srila Prabhupada's answer is, uh, where is it coming from? Said we, Why should we fear to die? Because we are eternal. That's our nature. So if we, our eternality seems to be through the material conception that uh, comes to an end, then there would be fear. Okay, let's move on. Let's take one more verse, Rashmi. Mataji, can you take that next verse? I would say there is fear to die because people, uh, they don't know what comes after death. Yes, ignorance. Uh, uh, I will have to leave, but before I leave, I wanted to share something. You know, you yes, said I want to hear what what you have learned today and what your group is doing. We want to hear. I'll, I'll tell you that uh, another time, Prabhu, because that is okay. very detailed what I've learned. But I'll quickly okay. share. You know, you said about you questioned that. Uh, <clears throat> so what about us? You know, yes. uh, Nashinga, uh, not Nashinga, Bishma Pitama. He saw Krishna in front of him. Yes. whilst he was leaving his body. So, what about us? So, we are not having the darshan of Krishna. So, we are, we've got the holy name. So, uh, in connection to that, uh, there was two incidents. I will just quickly, very short. I'm sure you you know. If you all know it, please tell me. I'll stop. Uh, do you know the incident about uh, Prabhupada visiting his friend, the businessman in Calcutta? So, I said yes, again. Do you know the incident about uh, Prabhupada visiting his businessman friend in Calcutta just before he left his body? Businessman in Calcutta? No, tell us. Yeah. So, uh, the, so this devotee went to uh, uh, to. Uh, I'm going to just say the same. I'm not going to do, go in detail. So this devotee okay. goes to this businessman, very very rich businessman, to take for to take uh, funds from him, whatever, whatever, and. Um, after the preaching, this businessman gave him 10 lakh rupees. Now, in that time, when Prabhupada was there, 10 lakh rupees is a lot of money. Even now, it's a lot of money. 10,000 pounds is a lot of money. And this devotee thinks, oh, wow, look at my preaching. It must be great. So he asks <laughs> this businessman, so you think my uh, preaching is, you're so impressed? So uh, this businessman says, what do you think? So he, he says, no, no, I don't, I don't think, even I'm impressed by my preaching. How can I expect you? So he says, correct. Uh, you are, I'm not impressed by you. Uh, I will tell you a story. So he tells him that my father was your Srila Prabhupada Swami's uh, very good friend. They used to play chess together and uh, they used to have a competition. This was when they were very young in school. And in the competition, Prabhupada would say that the person who wins this game will, I, the other person gets his lunch box. So Prabhupada would win this game of chess every time. Now in West Bengal, chess is very popular. Um, Calcutta, it's very, very popular. Like, you know, it's pretty much every evening people will be sitting around in their balconies and playing chess. So, uh, so they used to, uh, so Prabhupada used to win and this poor friend would lose his lunchbox and go hungry. And Prabhupada would run off with his lunchbox. So, uh, <laughs> So now uh, Prabhupada said, uh, sorry, the businessman said, so this man, uh, so this your Srila Prabhupada Swami was that, uh, is my father's friend. So uh, this devotee goes back and he tells Prabhupada this. So Prabhupada is very excited and he says, I must go and see him. Um, and uh, so then uh, this, uh, this uh, boy, he calls this boy this uh, uh, friend's son come and visit me. So this businessman goes next day uh, to see Prabhupada and Prabhupada recognizes him immediately, even without introduction and says, you remind me so much uh, of somebody I know. 
And he said, yes, I'm your friend's son. And then Prabhupada says, I have to see your father. Uh, um, bring him to me. And this friend says, he's, he has, uh, uh, he's very ill. Uh, he cannot see you. Uh, so Prabhupada says, Don't pro no problem. Tell your father tomorrow I'm coming with all my disciples to his house. Uh, so um, next day, Prabhupada uh, goes exactly. He remembers the house. He remembers the lane, everything. And he reaches this friend's house and he's on the bed this friend he's lying down on the bed and this uh, Prabhupada said look uh, Prabhupada very happily says look who's come look who's come and then they uh, they embrace each other and they share jokes and all that then Prabhupada tells him uh, that um, why were you not in touch with me so many years he said I was ashamed of myself you became such a big swami such a self-realized person and look at me stuck in this uh, material you know this business this and worldly things so I was very ashamed of myself. So Prabhupada says, you used to be a Sanskrit scholar. So why don't you do one thing? You are retired now. Uh, why don't you come to my, um, this, uh, wherever they were, I'm guessing the temple, and you start teaching my uh, disciples Sanskrit pronunciation and reading. Jai. So the... So the so the, uh, the friend says, oh, no, no, I can't come. So Prabhupada says, no, I'm going to take you with me. Come, come. And this friend is saying, no, no. And Prabhupada is saying, come, come. And this goes on for a while. Prabhupada is holding his hand and gently saying, come with me, I will take you. Come with me, I will take you. Come with me, I will take you. And this friend is not relenting. Anyhow, then Prabhupada leaves. Little did anybody understand what that come with me was. That very night, this friend left the body and he passed away. Uh, and uh, this, this son of his recollects everything and says that now I know what a great service Prabhupada has done to my dying father. Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada was telling my father, come with me, I will take you back home. And uh, so this 10 lakh rupees, this 10,000 pounds is nothing because I'm convinced Srila Prabhupada came and he gave darshan to my father and he was inviting my father to come with me and he has taken his father, he's led my father to, to, uh, to moksha, to liberation. So he was convinced of this and uh, of this um, of this thing. So, um, you know, in connection to what, what about us? So we don't know when, you know, at our time of death also, uh, that representative of Krishna will come and he will be sitting in front of us. So we don't know that. So I just remembered that story in connection because Mataji had told us just a few weeks ago that don't don't have any doubts. Don't think, oh, what will happen? What will happen to me when I am dying? You know, it is inconceivable. Nobody knows whom Krishna will decide to have mercy on. We cannot even, we have, we don't have the power to understand. So forget about it. Don't ask those questions. Don't have doubts. Uh, and the another story is of Jayadev Swami. You know Jayadev Swami, uh, the yes. author of Geet Govind? Yeah? Yes. So uh, Prabhuji, you know his story, how, um, uh, uh, so Jayadev Swami was, uh, um, his books, Ch Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used to read every night. Uh, they, he used to make his uh, associates read his book to him. So Jayadeep Swami was um, quickly, he was writing the, he was in that mood where he used to write uh, poetry, very beautiful poetry. And the poetry used to be about the uh, conjugal love between uh, Radha and Krishna. So that was what his poetry was about. It was very beautiful poetry. And Srila Prabhupada said it is uh, best that we are not there, you know, people like us, we should not be reading that poetry you, uh, unless Absolutely. you're ready. Yes. Give yes. Govind is not for anyone and everyone. Uh, hmm. So, uh, Geet Govind is for very, very advanced souls. So, uh, one time, this uh, uh, this Jayade Swami, he got this. He was in this mood, and he got this. He got this. Uh, uh, I don't know what you will call it. He got this uh, feeling that he there is this Radha Rani has become upset with Krishna, and he's trying to um, he's trying to. Um, uh, uh, please her and then in that trying to please her she's not getting pleased uh, it's called ma manabhav so so he uh, he tells radharani that um, uh, you put your foot on my head now as soon as jayadev swami 
pen wants to pen this his hands start to tremble how can i even think of writing this supreme personality of god is telling radha ran to put her head uh, her feet on his head i can't write uh, write this so he feels so upset that how can such a thought even come to my mind tells his wife his wife was as devoted as him uh, they both used to live in a place which later on became uh, uh, known as uh, very close to navadweep so um, he tells i'm going to the ganga uh, to take a shower uh, to take a bath you keep food ready for me prashad ready for me so he goes off now very soon uh, he uh, krishna himself comes as jayadev swami my wife is very surprised you are just gone for a bath you've just come back so quickly he says uh, uh, it's okay you give me prashad he has the prashad and then krishna himself in the form of jayadev swami writes what he what jayadev swami stopped from writing so he writes that uh, all that whatever you know that past time which jayadev swami was ima- was thinking mm. about uh, and then he goes away uh, and says oh i need to have another bath and he goes uh and in the meantime the real jayadev swami comes back krishna is gone the real jayadev swami and says okay now serve me prashad so this wife says you've just had your prashad uh, what you're asking for prashad again so this jayadev swami thinks she's gone mad uh, forget about the prashad i'll just go back to my writing as soon as he opens his um, uh book scripture he sees exactly what he thought has been penned down there so he knows what his a uh, wife is talking about he calls his wife and they both burst into tears and he explains what has happened and says oh my god i was writing geet govind but you are so fortunate you have seen the lord you fed the lord uh and they cry cry and uh then shri chaitanya mahaprabhu appears in front of them in his golden form um and he gives them darshan as chaitanya mahaprabhu himself and he tells them uh that yes it was me and uh you continue writing geet govind i want you to finish it and when i appear as chaitanya mahaprabhu then i will read this every night it will be read to me so i want you to finish this scripture so then uh that's how they have darshan and then he finishes geet govind so uh that was just quite a short again i thought you know it was relevant that so krishna does give darshan and this was only 400 year uh, 200 300 years ago before chaitanya mahaprabhu jayadev swami's incident so it is again not very long so krishna is giving darshan uh, we never know <laughs> so jai Hare Krishna, beautiful, beautiful, both beautiful stories, huh? with Sri Prabhupada and his friend, beautiful story, huh? and uh, with Chai Dev Goswami as well. Thank you so very much, Rashmi Mataji. And on that note, we we'll stop for tonight because we are already at nine o'clock exactly, almost. And uh, it was a beautiful session. Also, uh, Amit didn't come back. He is on. They're blocking uh, some. uh laboratory i believe so uh to for animal experiments uh, somewhere else uh, so he thought he would make it on time but he didn't huh? and uh, samir was shortly here oh yes yeah, so doing some experimentation on beagle dogs and the compound has been blocked by activists so and he wants to is joining them okay so and why she know that she's not feeling very well uh with the hot weather and uh, arthritis flared up uh, in her hands and like that uh hari krishna and i you were quite probably quite right i don't know if i should see a doctor it's not that serious so that i get this strange kind of pain in my ring finger left hand and right hand uh, it may be some onset of arthritis as well that would be a shame if that would hamper me to play the harmonium but i mean whatever what can be done okay here we stop here we stop and we'll see you all back on wednesday thank you very much hare krishna hare krishna Hare Krishna. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hari <laughs> Bol.
Thank you. Beautiful session. Beautiful explanation. Beautiful reading. I think we're doing extremely well. I'm sure on Wednesday we have a few more. Ah, thank you. Adiós. Adiós.